Welcome to Inside the Cave. Today's broadcast sponsor is Chevy Dealers of the Ozarks, proud sponsors of the Missouri State Bears. Stop in your local Chevy dealer today. And today's guest is Missouri State men's basketball head coach, Dana Ford. Coach, how are you? Good, Art. How are you? I'm doing great. We're uh, nine weeks in to this uh, current circumstance. What now is the timeline for kind of starting to gradually reemerge and uh, get back into the office and get the athletes on campus? Well, I think it's uh, like, like most things right now, it's really an individual type of situation and, and each team will decide, I believe, what they want to do, uh, each conference and, and uh, each state. You know, and, and so I think for us is, is just to wait and see uh, what, what the NCAA uh, decides they're going to allow to do and then uh, get a feel for our student athletes and their parents and their, their, their families to see how exactly they want to move forward and then kind of make it off of that. So uh, I think things are just day to day and just waiting to gather as much information as possible. And, and when all those decisions decisions are made, then we can kind of move forward. I guess winter sports like basketball have the advantage right now that you got time and a lot can and probably will happen in the next six months. So we'll see what happens with baseball and football before we get to basketball. For sure. You know, I, I think uh, the more information that's gathered, um, the, 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 the powers to be will be able to make the right decisions. But as of right now, now um, it seems like things are moving slowly, which I guess they should. If you don't really know what what it is you're going up against, and uh, for basketball, obviously starting later in the year um, will, will definitely be a benefit for us. Uh, I really can't imagine how how football coaches feel at this time, con considering that their season is you know in, in a coach's eye right around the corner. You have, and every other coach in the country, a unique circumstance this spring with recruiting and not being able to bring prospective student athletes on campus, which uh, I know we feel like at Missouri State is a huge advantage. If you get them on campus, see the campus, the facilities, then uh, you, you got a good chance of, of getting them to say yes. But nonetheless, uh, you and your staff have been very active in recruiting. How has that process been for you? Well, this year we um, we decided to recruit certain players all year long. Uh, a couple of our signees, we could have uh, brought them on visits in the early signing period and, and, and maybe gotten them to commit. But what we elected to do this year was uh, continue to recruit them. And, and um, you know, fortunately for us, it ended up working out because um, we, we knew the guys and they knew us. And the fact that they couldn't visit our facility uh, it, it was a big factor, but it, it wasn't uh, too big of a factor to overcome the fact that, that we had gotten a chance to, to know uh, both parties, with the exception of Sky, who, who visited uh, late in the conference season, I think, uh, or, or excuse me, early in the conference season in January. So um, it, it's, it's just one of those things to where you, you had to do what you had to do uh, in a perfect world. We would love for everyone to come on campus and meet everyone and get that person-to-person -person interaction. But the truth of the matter is, uh, we didn't have that option. And, and you, you couldn't wait until that was made available to you. So you had to make some, some tough decisions. And, and like most everyone in the country, uh, we signed players without them being campus. So what do you feel about the makeup of the team right now going into the season? Well, it's way too early to tell. Uh, what I do know is that, um, our returners uh, are guys that we feel like have have um, uh, proven themselves worthy uh, of, of being at Missouri State. And, and what I mean by that is uh, they're guys that have handled their business academically, guys that have tried to do their best on the court, uh, guys that have been model citizens, and, and quite frankly, guys that really want to be here. And, and, and uh, they want to be here for all the right reasons. And then in terms of the newcomers, I really enjoy getting to know them. Uh, it's, it's hard to get a real basketball feel on them until you coach them. But in terms of people and their families, uh, things have been going great. And uh, I know they're looking forward to coming back to campus and, and being a part of Missouri State. Well, I know uh, with, with 
all team leadership at the point guard position. And looks like you've brought in a couple of new ones. Yeah, I mean, you know, the way we've gone with our recruiting is we want all of our guards to be able to play all different positions. And so um, we, we've kind of moved away from the traditional point guard, shooting guard, small forward. Uh, that was something that I have done most of my career in terms of being a head coach. And, and this year's team will be a little different but we do have some lead guards that we feel like are going to be guys that can, that can really uh, make plays. I think playmaking was a, was a part of last year's team that we really lacked. We, we lost one of the best playmakers uh, in the conference in Josh. And, and unfortunately we didn't do a good enough job replacing him. And now we've got DeMar Sharp, who's someone that can uh, shoot, dribble and pass a junior college, first team, all American from the state of Missouri. Uh, he'll be our, our fourth uh, Missourian on the roster now uh, with uh, Jamonte Black, um, uh, Isaiah Mosley, and, and Jared Ritter. And then also Sky Wicks is a 6'6 playmaker uh, out, of, out of originally from New Jersey, uh, moved down to Florida for a senior year with his mom. And uh, th those two guys are, are really good playmakers, and they want to be playmakers. Um, they they want to create for others. And, and that's just part of uh, being a good teammate, and, and obviously have any athletic ability to, to do those things. Today's broadcast sponsor is Chevy Dealers of the Ozarks, and we'd also like to thank the payroll company. Visit paydaysmadeeasy.com. So uh, we'll get back and talk more about the, the specifics of the personnel on the team, but as we uh, go into this uh, uncharted territory, uh, we're assuming, obviously, and hoping that there's going to be a season but it's uh, possibly going to take on uh, a, a different cast than what we've had before, and that'll be true of the school year as well. So from that standpoint, let me ask you what you think. Uh, well, let's ask about scheduling first, how, how that has gone and, and how that has been affected by the quarantine and the pandemic. Well, like everything, it's definitely affected it. And, and I think uh, the, the number one way that it's affected it is, is financially. And and so when, you, when, you, when you're at our level, uh, we, we can elect to play what are called guarantee games, meaning people can pay for us to play them. We, we chose to do that last year uh, in an attempt to uh, build a resume uh, in case we did not perform well in conference or, or even win the conference tournament. And uh, we were not able to win enough of those games. And, and for example, those games were VCU, LSU Xavier, in which all those programs paid us $90,000 to play. And, and this year, we're not sure if we're going to do that. Uh, we've, we've yet to make that decision. We're, we're trying to wait and see how things uh, work out. But what I do know is that programs at that level aren't offering $90,000 right now because this pandemic has affected them. And then on the, on the, on the other side of that financial coin, you, you have travel. And, uh, you know, uh, I've always believed I've always believed in playing anybody, anywhere, anytime. But but right now that that's just not a not a choice. And, and what I mean by that is if uh, UCLA wants to play us right now, well, unfortunately, we're not going to fly out to, to California to play. Or if uh, St. John's wanted to start a home and home with us right now. Well, unfortunately, we, we would not be able to do that because we're just not going to spend the monies to fly to California or New York, and we're not going to put our student athletes uh, in, in areas where the pandemic has, has basically been a hot spot. So it's, it's really affected it in, in the sense of finding people to play more regionally. And, and uh, like I always say, it, it takes two to tangle. I mean, if, if, if you're going to have a basketball game, you got to have two teams. And I know that, you know, we have reached out to everyone. I would have to say within a 300 mile radius and some teams were still waiting to hear back from and, and some teams have already said no. So uh, it has become very difficult to schedule during the pandemic. Well, and let me go ahead and ask because there has been about uh, discussions with the University of Missouri playing them and, and this initiated from Coach Conzo Martin saying in an interview about two, three weeks ago that that was the plan that uh, Mizzou was going to come here and play. Uh, what's the current status of, of that possible game? Well, I mean, it, it, it only does great things for Missouri State to play Mizzou. And so, uh, you know, we will play Mizzou 
any place, any time, anywhere, because that, that will help our university, that will help our community, and, and obviously it'll help our basketball program. Uh, with that being said, I, I think that uh, the, the game has to work on both sides, and, and when, when, that, when that opportunity presents itself, I think it's something that we can kind of nail down um, at the current time. Uh, I would not say that that game is a done deal, uh, but I, I would say that we would love to play the University of Missouri any time that, that they could make that work. And in the event that the game would be in Springfield, if there is a game, uh, then is there talk of a, of a return game in Columbia at some point? Well, I mean, I think, I think obviously uh, we, we would have to return that game um, for, for sure. Uh, I, I cannot foresee them presenting us with the opportunity to just come to Springfield. I mean, that would be fantastic. But, but I think it's only right that we return that game. And, and, um, but, but, but it's not just University of Missouri, in my opinion. I, I think we should play every team in our state every year alternating home and homes, whether that be UMKC, Southeast Missouri, SLU. Uh, U, uh, I mentioned UMKC. I guess it'd be us and Mizzou would be the other two. So I, I think it only makes sense. And, and four of the five are public universities, I believe. And, and um, you know, again, it, it, it has to work for everyone. And, and I've always defended coaches in scheduling because when it comes to scheduling, everyone has to do what they feel is best for their program. Well, I've always thought that playing the best people you could possibly play is what's best for your program. But, again, uh, everyone has to do what's best for them. Once again, today's broadcast is brought to you by Chevy Dealers of the Ozarks. Stop into your local Chevy dealer today. And a special thank you as well to University Plaza Hotel, where local and luxury meet. So, Coach, you're scheduled right now to play in a tournament in Jamaica. What's the probability of that and, and are there alternate plans being considered? Yes, I, I think that um, the, the – the, the gentlemen that are putting that event on are trying to move that event inland. I'm not sure how successful they're going to be at that. Uh, as of today, we're still in the event, event and, and I, don't, I don't foresee us not playing in the event, uh, but there are still a lot of uh, details that have to be ironed out on their end. Uh, what I do know is we're currently working on a one campus site game. Uh, due to the fact that the NCAA uh, came down with the rule changing how exempt tournaments now count against your schedule. You can play in a two-game exempt or three-game exempt. This is going to be a three-game exempt for us, meaning two of the games have to be played on two different courts, one at our place, and then on a neutral court, uh, we have two games against uh, the, the three possible opponents. We've been to our, our Wake Forest University out of the ACC, uh, UNC Greensboro, out of the Southern Conference, a really good mid-major program, and then finally UMass, a, a team from the A-10. So any two of those three that we have an opportunity to play on a neutral court will we'll do very well for, for, our, for our team next year. And then when we talk about conference games, and even, as you say, uh, hopefully some uh, regionally close non-conference games, uh, how might travel look this year as opposed to how it's been in the past? Well, it'll definitely look different, and, and, and I think uh, at the end of the day, it'll all be uh, determined by how the conference schedule uh, layout is. For example, if there's any opportunities for swing trips or if there are games over Christmas break, where in the past we probably uh, a chartered flew over Christmas break, well, well, now it probably will make, make more sense for us to, to maybe bus a few more trips, especially when school's not in session. Uh, for the simple fact of trying to save money uh, for the budget and, and, and not just being so uh, carefree with our spending. Uh, in terms of the non-conference, um, again, it's going to all be determined by who else we can get to tangle with us. I mean, it, it, we, we've started regionally, but, but when you don't get regional opponents, you've you got to start to branch out. And, and so we've started to branch out a little bit, and, and hopefully we don't have to to, to make those trips to L.A. and New York, like I, like I mentioned, I didn't want to. There have been some key losses of personnel in the conference. Evansville lost a very promising young player, and Valparaiso uh, lost um, Marcus Freeman Liberty uh, to transfer. I know that is a trend in, in college athletics these days. 
case, but even though that, that maybe weakens an opposing team, it also weakens the conference. I know that's, that's not good for the Valley for that to happen. Well, I think you want to have your best players, but what I've always said is that the Valley's always figured it out. Uh, even when the Valley lost, lost really good teams, it's always seemed to figure out a way to, to stay competitive in terms of a league. Um, but you, you're obviously as good as your, your best players when you start talking about a conference. And uh, every year I've been associated with the Missouri Valley, whether playing or assistant coach or head coach, if you took our five best players and stacked them up against the five best players in any league, we would have a chance to win that game. And when you have kids that have left Drake and Evansville um, and now Valpo, um, potential first-team all-conference players – uh, it definitely it definitely weakens your conference as a whole, but what I'm more what I'm more uh, interested in is the fact that, that you know Gage Prim, uh, probably one of our better returning players, as well as Isaiah Mosey, are two guys that I feel like can play at any level in college basketball, but have both elected to continue their careers here. And um, whether we like it or not, and, and this goes for coaches and fans, uh, kids have the opportunity now to to basically do what they want to do. And you can't, you can't not like it in one part of their life and like it in another. And so, you know, everyone starts to talk about the mental health and, and everyone having a choice when it comes to uh, how they do their body or how they do uh, the way they like to live, their recreational, and then maybe want to get upset when, when the, one of those decisions affects them. And so you, you can't speak out of both sides of your mouth. And, and what we've decided to do as a whole in our country is give kids the power. And um, I don't know if that's smart or not, but that's just the way it is. And college basketball uh, personnel is no different. Well, Danny, you just talked about Gage Prim, and I know you were looking forward, hopefully, to having a fully healthy Gage Prim for his senior. Oh, for sure. And, and I don't anticipate him not being healthy this year. I think he's going to be 100% healthy. Um, last year's injury was brought to our attention um, literally on the day of our, our season tip-off. And, and I think that was one day before our opener, if I'm not mistaken, or our exhibition game. And so we had to adjust a lot of what we had practiced uh, in order to, um, you know, change our team a little bit uh, for when he did not play. But, but this year, uh, barring something new, we, we don't anticipate him being injured uh, with the same injury that he dealt with last year. And when healthy, we feel like he's one of the best players in our league. Today's broadcast sponsor is Chevy Dealers of the Ozarks and also Highland Dairy, the official milk provider of Missouri State University. So, Dana, I know uh, growing up uh, a, a basketball player and fan and growing up where you did and when you did, you've had a particular, like a lot of us have, in the Last Dance ESPN series, which concluded – earlier this week on ESPN? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've been uh, – man, I've been glued to the series. and In fact, I want to watch it all again already. And I've, I, I, um, I've just always um, loved Michael Jordan Gr growing up in Southern Illinois. I was born in 1984. So, um, you know, his first – after his first couple seasons uh, in the NBA and – and uh, when you grew up in Illinois, whether it be Chicago or Southern Illinois or, or almost probably anywhere, uh, when you grew up watching Michael Jordan, he's probably going to be your, your favorite player. He, he's either going to be your favorite player or, or your least favorite player. And, um, you know, just just watching all the, the, the footage that they have that when you're a kid watching him, you really don't have any idea what's going on. Just seeing that and how he interacted with his teammates and, and uh, just, you know, the, the stories about how his mom was the one to, to influence him towards Nike. Um, when you think about something like that, uh, that that's such a, a huge game changer for, for just, just not, not just Michael Jordan and his family, but basically the entire world. I mean, he has become the biggest sports icon in, in terms of Nike, uh, I, I would imagine, ever, um, along with maybe Tiger Woods. But... Uh, stories like that I've really been fascinated by. And then, then obviously rewatching all those highlights of those big wins, I've, I've loved that as well. What do you take away the most from the series as to uh, 
the, the, the reason for Michael Jordan's success. Oh, wow. I mean, I, I don't know if there's one particular reason, but one of the things that I really like is, is the way that portrayed he was raised by his family and, um, you know, them holding him accountable and being honest with him. I know there was a part in the movie where his, his father set him down. I think it was he was a freshman and basically told him, the things that you're doing, you're not going to be, be able to accomplish what you're saying you want to accomplish. And um, that, that's so true because I, I just feel like, um, you know, once we get student athletes at our, at our level, uh, our ability to coach them and, and get them to do what they need to do is going to be a direct byproduct of how they've been raised. And, um, you know, we can't change people once they get here, uh, especially right away, I think over time maybe. But, you know, if, if everyone's parents set them down and was honest with them, like Michael Jordan's dad was honest with him when he said, if you continue to do what you're doing, you're not going to accomplish what you want to accomplish. And that's just so true because he was doing a lot of mischievous things. And so uh, that, that part of that, being a parent, being a coach, really stuck out to me. Today's fan question is courtesy of Great Southern Bank, understanding what really matters, member FDIC. The fan question is, Coach, what is something positive you will take away from the last three months of this global pandemic? Oh, wow. Of the pandemic. Well, you know, it's, it's, if you look at it from a, from a selfish standpoint, I, I think you can find, or individual standpoint, I should say, you, you can find some positives. Um, you know, obviously, for me, a positive has been spending time with my family. Um, that, that, that has been a positive. Uh, not, not always being able to be present with my family is definitely something that, um, you know, as a basketball coach, we've elected to, to not have that luxury in our lives. I mean, this is a choice that we make. And, and then I think a, a probably another is maybe – Realizing that, um, you know, we're not in total control. And, you know, I know as a coach, a lot of times we always think we're in control. But I just think as a natural human being, you always think you're in total control. Well, you know, this pandemic shut, shut down not only our country, but the world. And whether it be for one day or, or 10 weeks, like, like we're approaching, um, certain places have been shut down. And, and I think that's sometimes that's a positive because, uh, we need a little dose of reality. Now, this has been a huge dose of reality and, and probably more than what any of us need. But at the same time, it, it's good to see that, that I can survive with, without having to be a coach every day. And, and sometimes we start, you know, putting our, our line of work, or our businesses before the things that really matter in life, your health, your family, your friends. And, and I think that a positive has, has been the fact that we can survive uh, even in the hardest times. Coach, good luck to you and all the Bears not only surviving but thriving. Good to see you there in your, uh, in your man cave and hope to see you back in the office and on the sidelines at uh, JQH Arena before too long. Yeah, it'll happen. Uh, everybody just got to hang in there. It'll happen. Sounds good. Coach, thanks. Thanks, Art. Well, this has been Inside the Cave, presented by Chevy Dealers of the Ozarks, proud sponsors of Sir State Bears. Stop at your local Chevy dealer today. Be sure to tune in next time as we visit with football head coach Bobby Petrina. Until then, our Dane saying thanks for joining us, and go Bears.